Today I'm going to give you a brief overview of my winch system. I had some questions about this after I posted my last couple of videos, so I'll give you a brief run through of everything. Later on in another video, I'm going to do an in-depth, uh, long-term review of the winch itself, and I'm going to get really in-depth with these connectors. Believe it or not, there's a lot more going on with those than meets the eye. We'll start with the winch. This is a 12,000 pound Vortex brand winch. Long story short, I've been extremely happy with it. I've had it for about six and a half years at this point, and it has pulled quite literally everything from semi-trucks and bulldozers to pallet jacks and cars. I have absolutely no complaints with this thing, and I would buy it again in a heartbeat. Vortex, uh, they don't have a lot of online presence. I looked when I bought it, and I couldn't find much. I looked just a few days ago and found basically the same post I saw from six years ago where people were asking about them and not really getting any answers. So like I said, I'm going to do an in-depth long-term review here soon, but short story, really happy, really good winch. In my opinion, it's probably the best winch for the money on the market. One thing I will point out is Vortex is the only company I've found that gives you not only the corded control for the winch, but they also include a wireless control uh, with every winch that comes standard and a lot of other companies if you can even get a wireless control you have to buy it extra and it costs more so the vortex winch really nice really happy with it uh, highly recommended one thing I did have a problem with was the fair lead if you've seen my other video the factory fair lead did not hold up I replaced it with this BA products cable tensioner I've got another video on that. I'll link to it down in the description below. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, well worth the money. Now that we've got our winch and our fair lead, the next thing we want to look at is our winch mount. Now I built this one myself. This mount is on a two inch receiver hitch. You can see right there I've got a receiver in the front of the pickup set in the bumper. It's a draw tight brand for what that's worth. This works really well for me because I am not a big off-road kind of guy. I knew I wanted to be able to move this thing and use it for loading trailers and things like that. So for me, the receiver hitch made sense. Uh, if you're going to do a receiver hitch, I would not go any bigger than probably a 12,000 pound winch. And there's two reasons for that. One is weight. This winch all by itself weighs 90 pounds. The fair lead is another, I think the fair lead was 18. The bracket I built, I overbuilt. It's 3 8 plate. Uh, it probably weighs another 20 pounds. So you're, you're looking at almost 130 pounds to lift up and slide into a receiver. And that's kind of tricky. There are some bigger electric winches. There are some 15 and some 17,000 pounders. I would not mount those on a receiver, not only because of the weight, but because by the time you're pulling that much of a load, you're really trying to do more than a two inch receiver is capable of doing. I know on mine, when I put that draw tight on there, it actually has a tag on it that says winch line rating uh, is only 9,000 pounds. So there, there's really no advantage to going with a massive winch. By the time you're into that 15, 17,000 pound range, you need to be bolting those solidly uh, to a frame or to some kind of fixed mount. So that covers our winch, our fair lead, and our bracket. The next thing we got to have is power to the winch. Now if you're mounting your winch into your frame or onto your bumper or something like that, you can just run cables from your control system out to the winch and it'll be fine. If you're doing a portable setup, you need some kind of quick disconnect and that is where these right here come in. These are Anderson brand SB connectors. Uh, like I said, I'm going to get really in depth with these on another video. But long story short, these are high amperage DC electricity connectors. I've got one fixed here on the winch and then I've got one mounted with a dust cover right here under the bumper. These are universal. There is no male or female. They are the exact same. They plug into each other just like that. 
These are commonly used on electric forklifts and there are several other companies out there building knockoffs and lookalikes. A lot of off-road companies offer a quick disconnect that looks really similar, but it's not. Anderson developed these. Anderson makes the best ones. I have been dealing with them for over a decade in the forklift industry and I've seen all the brands. I've seen customers try the cheap ones and they do not hold up under a continuous load. Now there are two really common sizes of these. The ones I have here are the SB350. There is another one, an SB175. It's uh, a little bit smaller than this. And it works well, but it's kind of limited on your amperage. I think it's rated for 200, a little over 200 amps. Whereas the SB350 is rated uh, well over 400 amps, maybe over 500. I'd have to look it up to be sure. The reason that matters is you've got to make sure your connection is going to be big enough for your winch. This winch, according to the manufacturer, can draw 480 amps at full load. So you want to make sure your connectors can handle that. The other reason I like the 350 better than the 175 is because I ran power to the rear of my truck as well as to the front. And going to the rear, I had to use a lot more cable, and to be able to carry the amperage that far, I had to use a much bigger cable, and the physically larger cable would not fit inside the contact tips of the 175 connector. So the 175s are great if you're doing a smaller winch on an ATV or a side-by-side, -side, uh, or if you're just doing a jumper cable plug on a pickup or a Jeep or something and don't want to try to carry an actual load with it. But if you're powering a winch, you need the 350 connectors. Don't buy the knockoffs, don't buy the cheap ones. I've got a link in the description to the real Anderson connectors. Click the link, buy them there, make sure you're getting the real thing, make sure you're getting the good stuff. I'm gonna do another video specifically about these connectors in the very near future, go a lot more in depth because there is a simple basic tool you can make yourself at home that will change your world dealing with these. It'll make it a hundred times easier to work with these connectors. So be sure you subscribe. That way you get notified when that one comes out. That way you get to see the winch review as soon as I get it done. Uh, but like I said, all that'll be in later videos. Today, we've made it to our connector. We've got the good connectors. We've got them installed properly. Now we need cable. You can get cable at your local welding shop, but make sure you buy a cable that is rated for contact with oil and gas. Regular welding leads, when they are exposed to petroleum products, the insulation breaks down. Now, like I told you, on my pickup, I ran cables both to the front bumper and to the back under the flatbed. Now, with that much cable, I did not want them both to, I, I didn't want it to be powered all the time. It would probably be okay, but I'm just nervous about having that much cable because it can vibrate and rub a hole in the insulation or God forbid, you know, I could be in an accident and the cable could get cut. And when you've got that much of a cable going direct to your battery, you are asking for a fire. So what I did is I installed a 500 amp solenoid right here. You can see it. That's this black thing right here we're looking at. This is power coming from the battery to the solenoid. These are the two outputs. This one goes to the rear, this one goes to the front. Now, if you're gonna put yours on a solenoid or some kind of switch, you need to be sure it is rated for the amperage your winch is gonna draw. A lot of these starter solenoids you buy at the parts stores, they're only good for like 130, 150 amps, and that is nowhere near enough for a winch. Like I said, the manufacturer says mine draws up to 480 amps under a full load. If you use a solenoid that's too small, it's going to burn up. What happens if a solenoid burns up is the contact tips inside it are nickel, and they overheat. Anytime you've got a connection, you've got resistance. When you've got resistance, you've got heat. If you're trying to use a solenoid that is not rated for the amperage you're pulling through it, those contact tips are going to melt. Best case scenario, they're going to melt and weld themselves together and the solenoid will never shut off. Worst case scenario, the tips are going to melt and they're not going to make contact anymore, which is a big problem for you if you're out somewhere and need your winch and your solenoid burns up. 
Now, even though I'm using a big solenoid on mine, that was a concern I had. So when I made my cables up, I made sure I left enough slack in the cable that if need be, either one of these that go out to my quick connect plugs is long enough to reach this always hot plug right here. So if I know I have a problem with the solenoid, if it goes out on me, I can bolt those other cables directly on right here and continue to use the winch. But like I said, be sure you're using an appropriately sized solenoid. Uh, I, I found this one on Amazon. It's rated for 500 amps. I'll put a link down in the description so you can check it out. All right, now between my solenoid and my battery, I took one other step to try to improve the uh, safety of this whole system. And I installed a fuse in this plastic box right here. I installed a 450 amp ANL style fuse and fuse holder. Uh, I went with 450 because all the other parts of this system from the 500 amp solenoid, the 500 amp connectors, the 480 amp winch, they're all rated for more than that. I wanted the fuse to be the weakest link in the system. So if something's going to get damaged, the fuse blows instead of burning up wiring or burning up a solenoid or burning out the winch. Now one thing you can see here is because I was running such heavy duty cable, the fuse cover on that fuse bracket, uh, I had to enlarge the ends a little bit. I had to cut those openings out just a little larger so that fuse holder would stick, so that fuse cover would still fit over the holder with that big cable in the way. I could have left it off, but that would have meant having two always hot studs exposed under the hood and I didn't really feel good about that either. So I modified the, uh, the holder cover a little bit. Now the last part of my winch system uh, under the hood, kind of the power source, is my battery cables and battery connections. If you're using the stock batteries in most pickups, you probably have a top post battery and it can be pretty difficult when you want to start adding accessories to those. So I bought these uh, add-on terminals here. They're not the cheap marine terminals. These are much higher quality. You can see these have a 3 8 bolt that goes clean through it. It's a whole lot thicker. It can carry a whole lot more amperage than those little marine terminals you see at Walmart and auto parts stores. So I'll put a link to these terminals down in the description as well so you guys can find them. Okay, now for the last part of this install, we're in the cab here. I'm using a solenoid, so I need a switch to control that solenoid. I wanted to make this look as nice and as factory as possible, so I bought these two switches from a company called Over the River and Through the Woods. They're Carling brand switches, but Over the River has them with lots and lots of really nice custom labels on them. And what I really like about these switches is the lighting setup behind them. As you can see, when I turn on the headlights, the description of the switch comes on, and it also dims with your dash lights. So if it's night, if it's dark, you can see exactly which switch is what. And the other thing I really like about these is whether your headlights are on or not, when you engage the switch, the emblem lights up to show you that the switch is engaged. Now, I've got a second switch here for the, the work lights on my bed. It's not as big of a deal for those because, obviously, work lights put out light. You can look behind you. You can see that they're on. But with the winch solenoid, there is no external sign that you've left it engaged. So if you're out, you get done pulling, you're picking up your rigging, you're rolling up your straps, you're getting everything closed back up, it is really easy to forget that you have the solenoid turned on. And that's why I like that light, because as soon as you jump in the truck, you can see that from the driver's seat and say, hey, the winch power is still on, reach over here and flip it off. It won't hurt anything to leave it on, but I just don't like doing that. That defeats the whole purpose of putting in the solenoid to start with. All right, guys, that's our brief overview. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like. Be sure to subscribe. I've got videos coming uh, in-depth on the winch, in-depth on the connectors. I'm going to show you how to winch on a tractor or other machine with a bucket that doesn't run and you can't get the loader off the ground. All the products I talked about, I'm going to put links to down in the description. The other videos I mentioned, I'm going to put links to when I have them up. 
Uh, be sure you subscribe so you get updates when I get all that put together. And there you go. Thanks for watching.